Hey Vaishali, did you ever wonder what happened to Victoria's Secret? It used to be such a cool and trendy brand. No, and I was wondering how it all started. Well, let me give you the backstory. Back in the late 1960s, the founder, Roy Raymond, was shopping for a lingerie for his wife and was thoroughly embarrassed by the experience. Oh no, what was so embarrassing about it? Well, first of all, he thought that the whole process of shopping for such intimate wear was not designed for men. And second of all, most of the options available were not attractive or appealing. So, he had the idea to create a store that would cater to men shopping for lingerie for their wives or partners with a comfortable and welcoming environment. Wow, that's smart. But wait, aren't most of the customers women? What changed? Well, Victoria's Secret was a media hit, but it gained international success after the buyout in 1982 by Les Wexner that changed the paradigm of the brand and shifted the focus towards women rather than men. Oh, okay. So that's why Victoria's Secret is associated with femininity, body image, and women's sensuality? Exactly. The annual Victoria's Secret fashion show, which debuted in 1995, played a key part in the image of the brand as well. With its high-energy performances, gorgeous models, and elaborate costumes, it really helped establish the brand as a leader in the lingerie industry. Let's take a deeper look at the rise of Victoria's Secret. So, what are Victoria's Secret's sources of brand equity? Victoria's Secret's success is attributed to the duality between product quality and emotional appeal. Known for its high-quality lingerie, Victoria's Secret created a premium aura surrounding the brand. From its beginning, Victoria's Secret has been seen as an innovator with regards to lingerie. Its iconic designs and pink-lined bags increase its depth of brand awareness and resonance. This increased consumer loyalty and the brand established itself as its market leader. Further, quality and consistency call on the rationality in consumer choice. On the other side, Victoria's Secret is a clear example of the value of having an emotional appeal in the eyes of consumers. The brand has been able to tap into the emotions of the target market, creating a sustained customer base. It focused on making women feel beautiful and empowered, making lingerie an accepted part of fashion. Where before, lingerie was considered uncomfortable and extravagant, Victoria's Secret made pieces attainable for every woman, increasing its breadth of brand awareness. Considering the emotional aspects of Victoria's Secret created a strong value proposition. It established value in relation to excellent products and experience at a moderate price. Wait, what about these fashion shows? Wasn't there a lot of controversy around the shows? With the models being too skinny, not relatable or something? Yes, absolutely. It felt like Victoria's Secret wanted to make women feel beautiful and empowered, but it did quite the opposite. I wonder how that happened. It almost seemed like they were on the right track. Its fall can be attributed to several factors. For example, negative advertising campaigns. How? Weren't their ads fancy and gorgeous? That's true. However, the facts behind these fantasies are Victoria's hypersexuality and objectification. They promoted a narrow, unrealistic standard of beauty. For instance, in 2014, the company launched the Perfect Body campaign, with tall and skinny models standing together with the word The Perfect Body in the middle of the picture. Doesn't that sound more like a body shaming campaign? Lowering a woman's self-esteem? Correct. It soon backfired because it promoted a non-inclusive beauty standard and raised insecurity. What else? At the time, other lingerie brands such as Airy, Third Love, and Savage X Fenty started to offer a comprehensive range of sizes and styles, celebrating diverse body types. Victoria's Secret lost a large amount of market share as they failed to align their brand values to that of the customers. Ah. Victoria's Secret? They refuse to keep up with the changing cultural and social norms. Their advertisements continue to feature thin, conventionally attractive models. It seems out of picture when the rest of the fashion industry is moving towards more diverse representation. Moreover, customers lost trust in the brand due to their vague response to the criticism. I know, the Epson News. Yep, Victoria's Secret was criticized for the link between the former CEO and sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and the entrenched culture of misogyny, bullying and harassment inside the company. However, they responded dismissively and toned deadly to these criticisms. Its brand image was described as angels in hell then. Oh, hi. At least from my perspective, I wouldn't be choosing such a non-ethical brand. Most customers have the same idea as yours. Victoria's Secret's label criticism, negative ad campaign, lack of inclusivity, and transparency all contributed to its downfall. According to CNBC, sales went from $8.1 billion in 2018 to $7.5 billion in 2019, diving down to even $5.4 billion in 2020. The signature Victoria's Secret show was also cancelled in 2019. That's terrible. Haven't they tried to overturn the situation? Yeah, things started to change in 2021. They started partnering with NGOs to provide underwear for women's needs. And to solve for the issue of bringing in inclusivity in the picture, have you heard about the VS Collection? It's their group of seven high-profile body-positive models from a different professions like Naomi Osaka, Paloma Elisir, Priyana Chopra, and Adut Achek. It is this group that replaced the VS Angels representing the brand. Oh, makes sense now. The other day, while I stopped past the store, I was surprised to see several plus-size mannequins on their display. They had diversified their product offerings in varied sizes. They even have accessories. 
Doesn't that surprise you? That's cool. I wouldn't have known about their in-store expansion being a digital shopper. Wait a minute, let me quickly browse through their online offering to see if there's anything different. What? Why aren't those sizes available on their website? I don't see any difference in the product listing images either. Why hasn't there been a photo reshoot with the new models for their plus size range while they've replaced their store with plus size mannequins? Yeah, you're right. There seems to be a brand inconsistency between the retail store and the digital presence. Now, that makes me wonder if their body positivity and inclusivity campaign launched under the intention of empowering women by designing comfortable lingerie with a natural look was a mere pretense. Probably, inclusivity was yet another sales tactics. What do you think about their recent lingerie design? The nude and pastel color lingerie casted in the social media inclusivity ad campaign is definitely not the signature design that once radiated glamorously gorgeous pieces. It looks like they're trying hard to bring in the everyman brand archetype Why? from being a male lover. True. But would you believe it if I say that their this rebranding has done some good in reviving the brand image? They've had a 13 billion boost of high evaluation online sales with a 25% increase in sales reported in 2021. That's cool. I still can't get over the fact of their massive shift in being inclusive. They should have tried to bridge a secondary association and brand personality by designing sexy and glamorous lingerie in all sizes while it gets endorsed by body positive models. Instead of pulling an uh, inclusivity and sexy brand image that they currently hold. You're right. They seem to be too observant in sustaining amidst the competitors, often forgetting their own brand value, failing to play with their strength. Certainly, there has to be some good out of all of this. The brand has introduced mastectomy, maternity, and nursing bra lines, and even raised funds globally for women cancer programs. Now, doesn't that sound empowering? The credit truly goes to the women-dominated board of directors who are working to picturize in every stride the brand message throughout every phase of life as Victoria's Secret's refreshing brand statement.